Greetings! This is I, Tantus Nair of Andrew, the Lord and Emperor here at the Golden Empire, and welcome once more. We're diving back into something we haven't talked about in quite some time. I used to do more videos on this sort of topic, but because I was always doing very highly edited videos for, well, Magic the Gathering, today's topic, I kind of walked away from it a lot. And this is my, maybe not my first, but one of my first times exploring it since my new format of videos, which I hope you'll enjoy here a little bit. But I do really like Magic the Gathering lore. And with the release of the set Lost Caverns of Ixalan, I thought, what better time to do a planar guide? I hadn't done one on Ixalan before, and that's what we're talking about today. Ixalan. So, just as a big shout-out, if you're joining me live here, hey, thank you for the live, hey, you can follow a big, big, decent thing to show your support here. And if you're over on YouTube watching this later on, hey there, there's the subscription, ring the bell, leave a comment. And my question for both, if you're live or in the comments, is what's your thoughts on Ixalan? Do you like the sets related to it, the storylines and things like that? Or, you know, do you feel like it's a good inspirational world? Both of those questions. Now, I am going to preference the things about where I'm getting my sources of information and where I've done a little bit of my research from. My main source of information, of course, is on the wiki page of Magic the Gathering. Because it's one of those things, when you're looking up magic lore, they tend to be the best places. There are some other places where you can find information. Uh, the Lost Caverns of Ixalan Stories and the Planeswalker Guides to Ixalan, both are really good. Any, there's also some stuff from like the uh, March of the Machines Ixalan when they went there, and various other magic stories that you can look up online that give you a snippet of information and history there. And combining that with, well, the lore on the cards, which is a combination of the quotes and the actual cards themselves, forms all this stuff. And also little, like, snippets here and there that Wizards puts out related to sets very often. So you can see it's a mess when it comes to lore and Magic the Gathering. So, yeah, I'm not going to lie, but it's the best just to start out with here. But if you want a deep dive, you can. You can. Um, I, you know, definitely look at the cards. The stories and, you know, the Planeswalker Guides to Ixalan that they did provide there. All, uh, anything that are, like, documents that Wizards provide are a pretty good job of setting up that book. Anyway. Well, let's begin talking about Ixalan, though, because, hey, we got some things to chat about. So, Ixalan. It's very Mesoamerican-inspired plane. It's a place of jungles, dangerous beats, ruins, lost treasures... The thing is, it also is inspired a little bit about the time period and the exploration of it. There is definitely a parallel between the vampire invasions of Ixalan and the Spanish colonization of uh, Mesoamerica. It's on purpose in this case. It is something that's supposed to parallel it. It's They're making it worse, uh, even by the Spanish standards in a way, which is kind of hard to say. You know, vampires slaughtering and stuff is, you know... Is it better or worse? I don't know. That's a thing for the people discussing in a different time. We're not getting into that today. That's that's a that's a like the symbolism in Ixalan. That's not today. But so it's a plane we've visited a few times. Of course, there was the original set Ixalan, of the latest one being Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It had had a planeswalker, but you know all the stuff with the Frexy invasion. Guati no longer is a planeswalker, but, you know, that's a that's if I do a story thing on Guati and stuff like that. And I will talk about that. I, I have my opinions on the Brexian invasion stuff, but hmm. And it's a plane that's very likely to probably get visited at some point in time. So if you're interested in that in the Rabia scale, you know, uh, they put it as a five. Um, that's like, it's the right time and place to bring it back, basically. Um, it's, not a, it's not a definite but there's a pretty good chance of uh, seeing it again. All right. So if we're going to talk about Ixalan, I do think we have to talk about the full history of Ixalan, and this will include from the sets and not the sets. Um, so here we have... Uh, I'm going to... I'm gonna, okay. Here's my apology for these. I butcher names of everything in every language. I'm going to butcher these two. So don't, don't, don't complain to me about the butchering. You want to correct me, please do in the comments. Just let me know how it is pronounced, and I will, you know, try to correct it in my normal life. But I'm going to butcher it right now. <laughs> Here's uh, Ax uh, Axlut's 
Atas. Ak laws to Atas. Lock, lock, ak laws of Tas. Ak laws of Tas. Do you give me pronunciation on this man's name? No, you do not. Anyway, it's the Bat God, the Great Betrayer. Um, uh, Ak laws of Tas. Uh, I like the Tas. Lock out Tas. I like the Tas. Anyway, so. There are ages. The original couple three ages, little is known about them. The fourth age is where we get some recorded history of Ixalan. And even then, it's still not a lot. Those first three ages, so very little is known about it. You know, it's like, um, we have, uh, like the fifth age and into the current one, which I think would be more the maybe sixth age of Ixalan. Um, or it could still be the fifth age. That, that it doesn't really tell me if the fifth age has ended and we're not in the information provided. But those earlier ages, little known. Fourth age is where we begin to understand things. Uh, the old tech, the people of the core, believe dinosaurs to be remnants of the fourth age. Uh, that they would have been the dominant race during the fourth age. So the dinosaurs of Ixalan, as they still exist, are remnants of these times. It's also assumed that the last survivor of the fourth people is the Bat God, the, the mortal that would become known to that. Um, his fear of death drove him to become godlike. He slaughtered all others and himself, feasted on their blood to sustain himself, the end of all things. Finding a way to drive nothingness to the next realm is being shaped, you know, like. It's basically assumed that the horrible Bat God on display here in, in imagery, which is, well, there's a card for it, um, Akla Zot's. Akla, Akla, Akla Zots? Akla Zots. I'll go Akla Zots. I might be pronouncing it correctly now. Maybe. Uh, old Tech, at least, got it right. Akla Zots, you know, again, we don't have a full history of Akla Zots here, but, and the, going into that and his entire thing would be definitely outside of what we're talking about today. But just know that, you know, this dark god that shaped Ixalan's history had its birth in the Fourth Age. And we will talk about Akhazatsa, you know, that he's this revenant and, you know, has caused some things. There we go. Akhazatsa out of the way. That's, that's our remnant of the Fifth Age. Now, we talk about what happens in the Fifth Age. Basically, we have the Deep Gods come into existence, the children of Chimil. So this is the, uh, Ch the godmother, Chimel, the river star, the inner sun, um, is the sun at the core of Ixalan. Worshipped by the uh, Oltec, uh, El Kaman, Ring, Sun Empire, um, which has the, you know, she she is equivalent to the threefold suns, which I'm showing the symbolism here. So they, it tends to be related together. Because, um, you know. Uh, the eternal enemy of, of course, our good friend, Aklazots. Anyway, it was in the fifth age that the deep gods were born. Um, before the last god could emerge, Aklazots slew him, eating him and taking his place. Uh, so that's kind of the origin there. Uh, the other just deep gods, just to mention them, are uh, the god of civilization, circular time, might, and life, if you want to look them up. I believe they all have uh, uh, cards associated with them, so probably. But anyway. Uh, the first humans on the plane of Ixalan awoke inside the core of paradise under uh, Chimo, and understood her to be their creator. They understood that uh, the world was new, humanity was new, and they'd be called Kaman Wenang, or the Fifth People. Um, which is another term for the Oltec, where the Oltec would become them, kind of thing. They spread on the tracks and regions of this uh, air region, settling in fields and jungles, uh, the supplies they needed. Uh, their needs were met by the bounties of the core, and they found time to leisure and study. They loved knowledge mapping and charting the shape of their world. They developed a uh, written language to record what they saw. Uh, 
numbers to count, measures to be to under understand what they encountered. Um, of course, the first figure of legend during this time, Tangelum the World Walker, came about. Um, who was the first one to circumnavigate the core? Um, and confirm the world uh, was a sphere built around a star. Death was not a terror to the living. It was paradise. There was uh, not an afterlife hidden from the waking world. Echoes, the spirits of those passed on, walked among the living. Uh, the veil between life and afterlife was thin gossamer. Uh, for Tanjolam, exploring the afterlife is simply another chance for adventure. So it became an echo, departed for the afterlife, seeking the fourth world beyond its borders. Um, and guided by voice, he passed the realm of spirits, gods, demons, and devils, and searched for the deep gods, Chimple's children, hoping that they would, uh, that the, hoping to tell them that their people had mapped the core and awaited their return. Because the, the gods were born, but went off on their own. Now, so that's kind of like our origin story of the people of Ixalan. The humans. But here, um, we have um, one of the deep gods. Um, so, uh, this is Aksumil. Um, so, here you go. Anyway, the Whispering War was the first big event here. Basically, Tangelam, when he traveled forth and dove deeper into the afterlife than more of things were there, basically actually passed into the afterlife, he created a doorway that dark things slipped through. Um, basically, the final child of the fourth people, Aklazots, came forth during this time period. He knew fear could, uh, could grant him power over people. Um, so he hardened the veil between life and death. Uh, living would no longer become echoes, and living recognized their mortality. Death became something to grieve and fear. And of course, Atlazots fed off that. He hunted the most terrified, ber uh, bereaved and desperate, uh, trapping them, whispering dark promises, Give yourself to me and you will live forever. Basically, this grief, fear, death, whispers of escape spread through the core. Pilgrims and evangelists raged through the cities, forming cults, intending to lure Aklazots into the, out into the light. Uh, their rituals horrified much of the people of this land, the common Winine. Uh, elders and lasers first tried to stop them, but the cultists fought back, and the fields and cities raged with violence. Um, basically, the Whispering War ended when the other deep gods arrived and intervened. And the first was uh, Ogier Oxonil, or uh, Oxonil here, who's drawn to the core with the familiar sounds of battle. Um, he reached back into the ferments and warned his elder sibling, uh, Ogier Tag, of what happened to the core. They entered the Whispering War against Aklataz, raising a company of 1,000 champions to follow him into battle. Aklataz attempted to kill Tag. Uh, Axunil stopped the Bat God and fought him in a climatic final battle. Uh, Axunil and his thousand moves faced down uh, Akl uh, Aklazots and his blood drinkers in their deepest lairs. And the God of Fury and Strength pour out one of Aklazots' eyes and imprisoned him. So, this is the... Uh... Okay, I'll put them into chat here. Akla... Uh, Aklazots... And then we have Axel Mill um, Tack. That's Q there. Uh, Ojer Tack. I'll try to put some more of them in here. Some of them are easier to say than others. But thank you. So, early history God core, you know, center of the world. Everybody's living in there at peace. You know, God Core has some children. They go out and explore the, like, you know, understanding of the universe and the plane as it is. Uh, you know, one of them is technically something from a previous age that's this leftover that slaughtered a deep god and replaced it as a part of the pantheon. Tried to basically influence and conquer the people for his own dark purposes. 
Aklazots. Uh, and then, you know, the other deep gods came, beat the crap out of them, sealed them away. All right. So now, the Whispering War is over. We reach the time that's known as the Age of the Sun. Uh, and there is uh, a art of a uh, Fomori, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit. Probably have it right. I finally got it right. So the veil between life and death thinned a little bit. Echoes return. Uh, the foundations of uh, Otek clan, the capital of the Kaman uh, Winag, uh, were set on the great sh shores of the Great Lake uh, Wachibal. Ojer Tak looked on. Kaman Wang built great golden age that lasted a millennia, the Age of Sun. It ended with the arrival of interplayer buildings known as Fomori, or colonizers, and later named the uh, Kisik by the Kama, an evocative word meaning to combo these new beings' fearsome appearance and imperial ambitions. Um, it's a previous civilization that actually spanned many planes, so it was, it's technically a planar civilization of the Coin Empire. Um, uh, it's a name that was given by a planeswalker who studied them, um, and they're identified as the Fomori from uh, the plane of Ear, which are of giant creatures from Ear. Um, so, again, this is an entire thing that, you know, could be talked about. Um, it's a thing that's been rediscovered more. Um, so just keep in mind this is an entirely different uh, topic, but the Fomori were a planar civilization that did exist in ancient times. This was before planar travel became difficult during the Ice Age. Um, well, the, yeah, it became difficult during the Ice Age, and then it was kind of opened up, but also changed a little bit later on. <sighs> And then now it's been opened up again, and planar travel just varies on the difficulty of it. This is a time period where it was theoretically easy. Theoretically. Yeah. Axonel? Uh, yeah. I'll keep kind of going over this. So, yeah. We have the planar invaders, colonizers, showing up. Um... Uh, one of the dark shards opened up, dropped small cylindric vegetables. Uh, from its step, a giant that spoke the common language and pleaded the common to allow his people to shelter in the paradise. The Kisk established a de facto dominion over the core, ruling with their shard ships and remains suspended in the sky around Chimmel. More shards arrived in town, the Fomori completed their shell around Chimmel and told darkness fell through the core. Um, this had a secondary effect of separating Fomori from Chimmel's children, comma, and the deep gods. So basically, Age of Sun is ended by these people that, oh, came seemingly peaceful and then just conquered it technically. The theoretical, they're called the Kisk here, and they are probably ancestors to what is the Fomori now in, uh, the, you know, their plane. But the, there's so much little known from Ear. Tak, okay. So, Ojer Tak. Gotcha. This leads us to, of course, um, which this is just a, a, a image of old tech in general, because this is the kind of um, the night war, which brings us to the major point in time where we separate out the old tech from who would become the Sun Empire on the surface. So, 320 years of darkness, basically, as these. Uh, uh, <coughs> Fomori or Kisk ruled the core. Um, resistance first came by the Echoes, then the Living. Uh, Olenem Teg, uh, the ninth hundred moon, was a heroic figure from the city of. Oh my God! I'm I, from one of their cities. I'm not going to try this one. Sorry, not going to try that one. It's it's gonna, it's. I'm going to really butcher it. Teg led the resistance, uh, raiding their cylinders, capturing individual agents, uh, eventually making their way up to Chimmel, where they found they would strike at the heart of the colonizers. In the final days of the wars, when the common warriors landed on dark shards, changing Chimmel, 
uh, the star was able to help them. Chimmel too had been fighting back, lashing from inside her cage again uh, with mighty energies. The shards were weak, attempting to heal uh, through unknown magic, but failing. Disruption penned by resistance attacks across the court hampered their infrastructure. Uh, liberatory attacks on key shards uh, by brave warriors proved too much for the Fomori prison. Chimmel uh, shattered one shard after another, and the cascade began. Uh, Cosmium, uh, which is a mineral that can be found in the core, uh, lashed out from Chimmel, blasting the Fomori and invert uh, and in innervating the Kama. Uh, those present at the day became semi-divine figures in their own right, the first angels of Ixalan. Uh, the deep gods follow, uh, followed, uh, finally able to hear their mother's cry and their people's plea. So, yeah. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing that um, this war with the invaders and there's this divine source at the core of the planet, you know, it lashed out in its energies, creating this min mineral now but those that were exposed in this battle became basically angels of what their version of angels are in Ixalan. The Fomori were expelled from the core, leaving ruins of their shard ships in orbit around uh, Chimil, as well as very smaller installations, half-complete projects across the core. Uh, over the ages, Kamon have worked to repair many of these wounds, and but even in the present, some uh, ruins remain. So now, we have the separation out between the um, who become the Ultec and those that become the uh, Sun Empire after this war, after the liberation from these invaders. So the core in this entire age has seen two huge conquests and wars. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing to get. But now we have the Exodus and the birth of another threat because we can't get rid of them. So the Kaman uh, Wenak grew to recognize the extent of the world as their own. The Age of Exploration began, followed by the Age of uh, Migration Settlement. So over the centuries, hundreds of thousands of them traveled to the plain surface to become the Sun Empire. Uh, those that stalled behind became the uh, Oltec. Uh, according to the Malmet, uh, basically, which are the uh, cat folk of the core, they and the merfolk fought alongside the Kaman in the Night War, uh, joining them on the surface afterwards. After losing their empires to the nascent Sun Empire, the Malmat were driven back into the cabins. So basically, in the early days of that night war, um, which, you know, battled out, the three humanoid species basically worked together. Uh, the people that would become the Ultics became the Sun Empire. The Malmat also went to the surface. The Merfolk went to the surface. But the Malmat and the Sun Empire fought, and the Malmat returned back into the core with the Ultex. During this time, we have the birth of the Micro Tyrant and the Myconoids of the Core. <sighs> An outbreak struck uh, one of Kanan's primary cities in the caverns. Oltec scientists in the Core determined that the disease was fungal, spread by spores, and highly advanced, uh, probably some re relic of the Fomori, um, loosened outside of the Core in Eon's Pass. This was the beginning of the Mycoids. Uh, without any barriers to stop them, they spread throughout the caverns. Oltec and Kaman humans, because they were still kind of separate a little bit, um, and the Kaman, as they were, kind of became more angels. It, it, it's a complex thing. Worked together to try to stop the spread of the Myconoids, but they could not. Uh, civilizations, cultures fell to the infection, um, and they increased more advanced and larger forms of Myconoids. Um, basically, the Kaman Oltec fled finding safety outside the caverns. Um, some of these settlers emerged above ground on the continent that would become Ixalan, um, the ancient ancestors of the Sun Empire. Um, basically, those that remain sealed the entrance to the core to keep the spread of the Myconoids out. So, we did have people traveling to the surface already, but now something happens in the core, it gets sealed off, and the remaining Settlers travel out. Okay. Now we reach the Quiet Age, and we have this man, or Sphinx, to thank for what happens next. Azur, the Planeswalker, who created the Immortal Sun to trap Nicol Bolas in uh, 3279, and basically shaped all of the 
Ixalan for the next large amount of time. And he created it in 3279. It was removed and deactivated in 4560. And that's around the time period it is technically now, because that's around the, you know, um, um, Sword Spark and everything that's happening. So uh, I the current tur- timeline of the Magic uh, Multiverse is around uh, that time. I don't, I don't have the exact number. But the Immortal Sun, basically, was made to trap Planeswalkers. It was guarded by holy countries on top of Montauk uh, Monastery in the continent of Horizon. It gave the local monarch influence in regional manners. It fell under the attack of a rival king, Patron the Wicked, who stole it, and uh, but lost it to Azor, who reclaimed it. Basically, Azor was like, you, here, you look after it for me. And then, you know, things went bad. So he's like, God damn. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway. He's got the Immortal Sun again. Um, it's around then 3760 that uh, Torazon, which later gave its name to the continent, split into three parts when its monarch died, each uh, portion ruled by one of the monarch's children. A religious war ensued. It raged for three centuries before the first vampire, Eldra of Garnano, ended it. And after the unification, many of the nobles undertook her transformation ritual and became known as the Rite of Redemption by the Church. Legions, the un- United Legions of the Dusk began a series of war and eventually took over the whole continent, and the last city-states were conquered, its inhabitants took the scene, formed the Brazen Coalition. So now we have the birth of two of the major nations of the world. There's the Torizen Continent and their Legion of Dusk, the vampires that are there. And then we have the Brazen Co- Coalition, who are the piratey, sea-vosing people that are the last of the people conquered by the uh, Torizen, who just left. On Ixalan, uh, the River Co- Heralds once dominated the continent uh, with their own power and kept the Sun Empire out of the interior. It was formed by, of course, the Orzica, uh Cha Chanto Inti, who united the city-states to become an empire. After War of the Riz- uh, River Heralds, um, uh, one of his descendants, Apatet... Okay, I'm going to put this here and I'm going to try to butcher it. Ah, uh, to Zek. Apatzek? Apatzek. Apatzek Inti the First gained possession of the Mortal Sun and used it without restraint. Uh, basically, uh, the civilization was reduced to a couple of coastal cities, uh, Orzka being lost to both sides, and um, basically the Empire still confronted the River Heralds on its borders. Basically, one of the emperors used the immortal sun and did devastated both sides, you know, drove them back. Then the uh, sun empire was besieged by pirates of the Brazen Coalition and the advances of the Legion of Dusk, who were also seeking the immortal sun. Remember, the immortal sun had been on their continent. They know about it. They're searching for it. It was moved here. They all uh, went to the lost city of Orzica. Uh where the artifact was supposed to be. Um, it was found by uh, several of the factions and stolen and removed by henchmen of Volus. So Nicol Volus now at the Immortal Sun. The thing used that was built to trap him. And that's again another story, not for today. Barrier was broken. Planeswalkers left the plane. Urzaka was retaken. Uh, the Sun Empire pushed the dust, Legion of Dust back to the sea, capturing and reverse entering their fleet in preparation for invasion of Torzon. Uh, forests were felled to raise a new fleet known as the Dawn Fleet. Hundreds of ships were, were built, nearly 10,000 soldiers and sailors crewed them. Um, they were launched, and their last known location was the midpoint between the two empires. So that was that. We do not know what happens to the fleet at that point. All right. Thanks, Azor. You've done such a great job here. Now, the Phyrexian invasion. We'll talk about that a little bit. So there was a new threat, New Phyrexia. 
In the early days of the uh, invasion, the sun was blocked out by smoke and falling ash of fires across the plain. The Elder Dot Dinosaur, shown here, Atali was completed, and, uh, you know, several hurricanes began forming off the coast of the continent of Ypsilon. Sky flashed with red lightning, wind sparked, razors preventing aerosaurs from flying. Uh, the core avoided the invasion, no part of the surface was spared. Uh, the continent of invasion of Ypsilon was invaded by the alabaster, copper, infernal host, furnace hosts from the seas on submarine like machines. Bursting on the land near uh, uh, Atsukan and charging inwards. Um, within days, tens of thousands of humans and dinosaurs were phyrexianized, but thanks to the uh, forewarning of Huat, uh, Huat, Huatli, the Sun Empire capital at uh, Hachutopa was ready for the attack, and the Emperor showed up to shore the defenses and funnel the uh, uh, invaders towards it. Seas outside the core were ravaged by the invaders, and dozens of towns along the northern barrier of the continent were wiped out. Uh, in the south of the Sun Empire, Astaten, uh, Azokan, uh, Atopek, and little uh, Puchtitli suffered similar fates. Basically, the Sun Empire, the Pirates of the Brazen Coalition, and the Legion of Dust banded together to fight the invaders. Uh, Atali was finally felled by Zamaka after injuring uh, Zetapla, uh, Ap-Atz-Zet. Thank you. Um, the mission, coupled with the defense of, uh, Hachatupa by Imperial soldiers and citizens, saved the Sun Empire Ixalan from falling to the Phyrexians. Uh, uh, Torizan was also invaded, and the damage to the eastern continent was far less than that of Ixalan. Um, so, basically... Because of the nature of the vampire side of things with Corazon, it was harder for Phyrexians to have an invasion there. They did a better job of fighting against it. So Ixalan suffered a lot more damage. Okay. And the Fre invasion ends. You know, Phyrexians stopped. Uh, Ixalan is saved. Great, we're rebuilding. But now, now is when things change. Now we're getting to the latest set you know, that we talked about a little bit here, uh, the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, because the invasion didn't reach the core, but allowed multiple entrances to the core to be discovered as part of their destruction. Also, uh, Aklazots was awoken from his slumber. Remember, ages and ages ago, Aklazots sealed away, defeated. Aklazots is awake now. All right. So, now we've got this madam here, who guess who this is? You probably want to know. But this is, of course, uh, Lendra of Granara, the one that unified the continent of uh, Torazon. Uh, yeah. So, as a note here, because it is important to say here, she was sleep slumbering on Ixalan. Um, yeah. She became a vampire, um, and basically <sighs> found the immortal sun, um, couldn't really get to it, put herself to sleep in a tomb of Aklazots, basically was eventually woken up uh, during the battle there, uh, just as a, a, a bit of note, and uh, so because this is important for setup for stuff with the, the Legion of Dusk, she basically didn't like the direction the Legion of the Dusk was going. Went back to her original continent and was like, "Hey guys, you know all my lessons I left you. Uh, you're not doing them right. They were supposed to be done this way. Why are you doing this? I united our continent to prevent conflict and stuff like that. We didn't need any more. You guys went whole hog on a lot of this crap here." And so then there's been a split between the Legion, kind of, which comes in here during this entire thing. Um, you know, that her faction of the Legion versus another person is like, fuck you guys, um, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're going war. We'll talk about that in a second here. So, let's talk about the core, because the core is back now. Um, it was the death of the Deep Root Tree, uh, which was a, a, a source for the Merfolk. The Merfolk bands from across it gathered in uh, Matzlach... Mat Zal 
Auntie Till Ma, uh, Max Mazal Auntie Mazal Auntie. Uh, that's close enough. Uh, so suddenly, Sun Empire and Dusk Legion of Dusk entered the core, met the old tech, uh, since the core was sealed. Um, the Legion of Dusk, this group of them, freed Aklatsots and attempted to snuff out the plane's inner sun. Basically, Aklatsots free was like, you know, hey guys, you know, thank you. Uh, I am the source of your vampirism that you exist through. Uh, let's go kill that sun. Didn't work. Um, the Myconite Hive, the Myco, uh, Micro Titan attacked the Ultech. Uh, both of these things were defeated, but both escaped to the plane's surface. So the Myconoid and the Micro Tyrant, their leader, are at the surface, and the Bat God, though defeated and not as powerful anymore from e e eons of sealed away, is at the surface. So we have two big opponents that could be just for storylines, for future times. We don't know what's going to happen with them. But also, we have power. Basically, a second Dawn Fleet was constructed in Queen's Bay by the Sun Empire, uh, along with des uh, dozens of uh, Mechano Quasicama, basically for an invasion of Torzin. The Emperor's sister um, plotted basically to depose her brother, and while uh, Elda here Hope to subvert the factions with uh, that were rising under Vona, the Antifex, basically her anti thing here, and Admiral uh, Beckett Brass of the Brazen Coalition basically came in in the meeting between these two and basically was like, "Hey guys, you know, like um, we support you, but we want to kind of make ourselves the you know have a state of control over the oceans between your two. We've been driven to the seas. We want to be a sea people. We're fine with that." We want a kind of our own recognition here. You've got you guys here on one side, we're here on this. We'll make some peace. So there's this peace project between uh, the parts of the three factions, and then also this thing of like an invasion, of a reverse invasion. So there's a lot of also black bat god and fungus. So like peace is kind of regained, sort of, but also there's this question of war. So honestly, if a really cool storyline could come about of this. Ixalan could be revisited. So, hey. Um, that's basically what happened in, you know, uh, the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Two dark things were awakened, battled it out, kind of, and then there was some peace talks, sort of, with the threat of war. Anyway. So, here is a map of Ixalan. Isn't that nice? Um... Ixalan is itself technically a hollow sphere. As a plane goes, it is a, it, it's got this core around a sun, the outer limits, and then of course the outside of it. So it is a literal hollow planet, uh, kind of journeying to the center of the Earth, hollow planet a little bit here. There are two large continents that are separated by oceans. There are theoretically other continents that really don't known about. Um, a journey from Queen's Bay uh, to the Sands takes about one week by ship. Um, further north is though the unmelting ice. Um, the Sun Empire has never sh uh, sailed north of its northern shores. Uh, and an omen path to the plain of Avacrios regularly appears. So these are some little like things here. And uh, omen paths are planar portals. That was basically created by the World Tree invasion that the Frexians did. So now they're connected with uh, the Plane of Strix uh, Haven. Um, okay, there's the pronunciation. There you go. Uh, so yeah, the set that had Strix Haven in it basically now is connected to the Plane of the Sun Haven occasionally. But these omen paths that used to open up between the realms of Kaldheim are now, because of the Vex invasion, showing up in other places. Anyway. So, let's talk about, first, the Stormwreck Sea, because it kind of uh, separates out a lot of things. It's home of the various archipelagos, the pirates, uh, the floating city of High and Dry, which is the base of the Brazen Co Co Coalition is here, Burning Port, uh, uh, well, those are places in there. 
Uh, the Spit Spitfire Bas uh, Bastion uh, is here. Uh, useless Isle and Corsair's Coast. That's a storm wreck C. Um, now, all right. <sighs> Let's talk about, of course, um, and sends is the islands off. Queen's Bay, uh, just to note, Queen's Bay is on Ixalan, and uh, Sens is on Tarzan. So it's about a week's travel within the two of them. It's actually... The continents aren't that far from each other overall. It's not like a huge, huge distance, like, you know, from uh, Europe to North America. You know, this is much shorter. Um, let's talk about Ixalan and what's on Ixalan. I'm not going to go into super details of everything there, but I'm going to talk about uh, some of the stuff that's on there. It, the continent has the same name as the plane. It's got jungles, rivers, dinosaurs, some that are domesticated, some that are different secrets in the jungles, of course, from previous times and empires. The Sun Empire is a major group here, uh, which technically there's the Sun Coast on the East Coast. There's Orsican, the Lost City of Gold. Now, uh, once now the cap once again the capital of the Sun Empire, um, with a lot of places within it. Uh, Patachupa, which is the former capital. Standing the coastal plains that rise in the high mountains, uh, rivering boarding speed, fresh water from vast inland mountain ranges, plunging uh, from Idlemach through heavily irrigated flood plains. Uh, it was moved afterwards. Uh, there's also Atsokan, uh, which was destroyed. It was a city state on the lower coastal plains. So the ruins of it can be found there, probably. Uh, Atopek was a vast city of temples built in reverence to the threefold sun. Uh, located in the high alpine forest at the western edge of the their lands, also destroyed. Uh, Quetz, uh, Quetzalcoatl. Uh, it's a state, inland land state with no cities, uh, only holding the small towns, uh, that farm a bunch of stuff. And, uh, we mentioned that little Pitbaki was destroyed by Phyrexians. Queen's Bay is a large bay on the southern side of the continent. Um, so basically... To the south is where Torizen comes from. Um, uh, Mirandinor is an island stronghold of the Legion of Dusk. It's a fortress on a barrier island in the south of the bay named after Queen Meralda. Um, there's a number of things around that. There's the jungle regions that has a lot of lost cities of ancient ruins from the Sun Empire's heyday and stuff like that. Um, so you can check out those ruins. Uh... Quetzalcoatl, uh, Pekaki, <clears throat> uh, uh, Pex, uh, Tannins of Attack. Uh, there's also Ikla Quiampa, Temple of the Sunset. Um, <clears throat> they're a set that wants to replace the Emperor with a High Priest and Theocratic role. There's also the Great River in this area and its nine tributaries, and of course the ancient merfolk city, Deep Root, which died during the Phyrexian invasion. In the mountain region, <clears throat> there's the Lost Valley, the Temple of uh, Alcazats does exist here. Um, it Limok, Cradle of the Sun, which is a sacred forest for both merfolk and humans, and the Primal Wellspring, the sacred source of the Great River, which used magic. There's also the Inner Sea, uh, which has hidden coves for pirates, and uh, as Kanta, the sunken ruin, <clears throat> uh, a thriving population center into a conflict with the river heralds caused to sink into the waters. And of course, uh, Tunao Lik Lixko, Temple of the Eastern Sun. And then there's uh, Sunray Bay, a large uh, brazen coalition town on the northern coast of Ixalan. Remember, they don't sail north. Um, it was left deserted after its population was taken over by the Microcarn in uh, the, basically the Fifth of the Dawn era. Um, but the Dawn downtown, the largest more productive mine in Brazen Convert uh, uh, Coalition, was part of this in here and was also taken over by Microid Infection. That Micro Tyrant conquering people and, you know, doing and uh, using them for fungal stuff. Alright. Yeah, again. There's, there's a lot to the 
continent of Ixalan. A lot of places to explore. But here are the caverns of Ixalan. Um, so these stretch from the core to the surface. Um, uh, they have countless miles of titanic, titanic cave systems. So the Banco, or Chue Kwa, uh, also called the Hanging City, um, is the de facto uh, Malamet capital and cultural hub. Remember, the Malamet are the uh, cat folk of Ixalan. They had helped out with the Night War, got went to the surface, were eventually driven back down here. Um, its population centers tens of thousands, uh, larger than Alta Torzin. Uh, it's a trade center, poetry, literature, Mal uh, Malamet culture. Uh, they live in communal housing built into clusters of massive fortress like stalactite that hang from the ceiling of the cavern. Uh, some are hewn directly to the so stone, others are painted white uh, like pottery. There's rope bridges, walkways, nets, platforms between the buildings, thick cables for aerial lifts. Um, the largest stalactite is windowless, its interior covered with a uh, cosmium glyphs. Um, in ma inside is a massive pyramid, hundred steps tall, leading to a room at the top where there's the southern throne. Um, basically, trespassers are exiled by being placed in a large fountain with a jaguar head up top that fills with sand rather than water and empties into uh, Matslat Santi. Um, no core or surface dweller has visited the city between when the Oltec closed off the core and the Queen's Bay expedition in Five Dawn. Uh, Probable coal or midden coal is a deep goblin trade city and port sprawls across the caverns under the Hanging City, uh, straddling both sides of a wide river. Mercenaries, merchants, porters, scouts, laborers for the jaguar folk above. Uh, it's dotted with rope elevators that transits between the cities. There's a uh, Chama Koj, a ruined half sunken city complex uh, where liquefied quicksand flows as deep uh, as deadly rapids. Um, it's a forgotten, likely human culture. Uh, the jaguar folk took it to themselves, either by conquest or it, uh, basically a, a bequeathal to them by the Malamet Sovereign. Uh, it's now uninhabited except for some wandering jaguar folk echoes. It is a site of pilgrimage for myth weavers and curious glyph scribes. Um, Queen's Bay Company passed through here on the journey to the court. Uh, Papi Zilo, uh, Zilo uh, once one of the greatest cities of the Kaman Winang, now abandoned. Um, in a cavern many miles across, from edge to edge filled with stone buildings and narrow streets. Central pyramids etched with co cosmium. Uh, the center of the fountain is a dry uh, fountain. Uh, the my myconoid infestation, the buildings were covered in blue and green luminescent fungus. Uh, Matt Zal Anti. The Great Door, a massive gilded temple complex of stepped stone buildings above and uh, below an underground freshwater ocean. Uh, basically, it was built by a forgot descendant of the uh, Oltec. So Oltecs are the descendants of the Kaman Wiang, and they had other civilizations. They kind of were destroyed by the Mykonites. Um, You know. Lamps burn in buildings. Uh, strings of bioluminescent baubles and baskets hold firebugs. Around and copper crud doors covered in glyphs seal the planet's plane's core from the surface uh, from the discovery of the myconoids until it was opened in, uh, well, when it was. Um, after the death of Deep Root Tree, Shaper, Pashanon rediscovered here, and thousands of Murphy folk gathered in the complex. Uh... Tekutlan, the Searing Rift, is a huge cavern, crossed uh, with arching natural bridges and thunderous falls of lava cascading down the side, uh, brightening up the lightning up the entire space. Uh, there's the Myconoid Maze, a fungal forest, uh, a large cavern, high ceilings filled with Myconoids, the nameless city in the West Chasm. All right, then we move on to the core. It's a big sphere. I don't think people would notice that. I really think the people would have noticed that. You know. Just saying. The core of paradise. Um, the sun is the plain source of cosmium. Um, the only surviving civilization here is the Oltec. Um, the gravity shift from entering the core 
um, is dizzying and similar effect to planeswalking. It was described by Quidgeness Khan. Um, a Luxodon planeswalker. Um, who, you know. Actually, it might spark during the Phyrexian invasion. I guess that's why I kept it. And apparently shows up in next time. You know what card? I don't know if you've got a card, man. Do you? Hard to say, you there. He probably does. Somewhere. Oh, he does. Uh, oh, he is one of the excellent ones. Neat. Anyway, uh, Luxodon Planeswalker there. Anyway, um, uh, there's Chimmel, which is the star at the center of the core, of course. Um, Oct uh, Otec Clan, the capital city of, uh, the Oltec. Um, the, uh, that location I'm not, uh, it's like O-Q apostrophe T-I-N-I-M-I-T. Yes. The Barrack of the Thousand Moons, the Swamp Hitting, the Temple to, uh, Aklots, uh, Aklot. Sots, the Temple of the Dead is there. Colonies end in the uh, Mututik Towers. That's what's at the core. Um, let's talk about the other places that are still on the continent, because there are some locations that we can kind of talk about. I'll leave this up here. Uh, Torzon, of course, is the eastern continent, ruled by the Church of the Monarch Vampires. Um, you know, the refugees and exiles became the Brazen Coalition. Um, there's Alta Torres in the capital and seat of the monarchy of the Legion of Dusk. Um, Garano, the birthplace of Elinda. Yedo, uh, Lujo. Dora, a vast mountain range by, uh, looming behind the continent bisecting river between the Free Cities and Alta Torrezon. Um, the Free Cities on the west coast and the plain occupied by humans. Uh, and sends a small scattering of islands off the western coast, uh, home to orcs. There's also uh, Lunelu, an island kingdom under the influence of the Legion of Dusk. The capital is the same name. Um, its small settlements and annual festival of running of juvenile raptors and streets while affluent steal their feathers. And then, of course, there's southern continents. There's rumors of southern continents that the Basin Coalition has been searching for, has yet to find them. Because remember, to the north is ice. Uh, Ixalan, and then below that is Torizen, but apparently there's even farther south, there's supposed to be other land continents on this planet, uh, but maybe the Brazen Coalition will find them. Maybe they won't. Alright. Who lives here? Dinosaurs! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we have the Brazen Coalition, which are goblins, humans, orcs, and sirens. The Sun Empire tends to just be humanoid humans, but it also uses a number of golems. It's got the Domesticated dinosaurs. Uh, the river folk, uh, the river heralds are merfolk. They harness elementals. Uh, there are two types of merfolk those that favor land, those that favor water, and those that do both. Of course, the Legion of Dusk has both humans and uh, vampires. They have domestic animals. Uh, the Oltec is humans. They have their own domesticated animals and their own constructs. Uh, they have gnomes and golems. So, gnomes are a construct of the Oltec. And the other sage sapient races that are on the planet are the Echoes, the Malamet cat folk, there are demons, dryads, harpies, deep goblins, myconoids, skeletons, and angels. Uh, remember I talked about when the angels were formed. Of course, there is a vast array of dinosaurs. There's a lot of dinosaurs. Um, They come in a variety of names and stuff like that. I'm going to tell you, uh, you can kind of break them down into various groups, uh, similar to where we break down groups in our uh, dinosaurs. Like, there are a number of uh, Ankylosaurs, Ceratopsians, um, Dracosaurs, Frillbacks, Hadrosaurs, Hammerskulls, uh, Ososaurus, Plesiosaurus, Pterosaurus, Sauropods, Stegosaurus, Theropods, um, and breaking them out even more from the Theropods, things like Raptors and Tyrannosaurs. But again, like, 
they're all called different things. They've all got different names. They're all different board versions of them. Uh, um, yes. And of course, they've got the uh, uh, Mekolo Quatzakamas, which are dinosaur doctors. A lot of other things live on the plane. I mean, you know, I can list the name of it, um, like down this list of other wildlife, but I don't know if it's really necessary to talk about all the different wildlife. Uh, there's other types of birds, things like uh, quetzals, archaeopteryxes, capybaras, chupacabras are a thing, coatis, uh, sharks, piranhas, frogs, griffins, various types of insects, including insects, horrors, bears, imps, bats, barnacles. Um, leeches, lemurs, nautiluses, opossums, uh, oysters, panthers, snakes, spiders, the myconoids, uh, which kind of are both intelligent and not intelligent. There's one. Saber-toothed cats, uh, salamander, serpent salamander, worms, snails, sunbirds, tortoises, trilobites, wild beasts, and worms. And then, uh, you know, a bunch of things that are Coffee is around here too. Uh, they've got various kinds of legumes. Maize uh, is a thing. Mangoes, uh, hibiscus, avocados, beans. Um, you know, so there's a lot of squash, uh, tobacco. Uh, there's a lot of plants that are very similar to ours, at very least in name. And they're used the same name for the sake of using the same name, and they're probably very similar to what we have in our world. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, and they do some language things too, but uh, but that's if you want to research their language side of things for a lot of the meanings and stuff for that. They do have various languages, like there's the language of the Sun Empire, the language of the Kaman uh, Wenang, the language of the Malmet, uh, uh, you know, um. The uh, language of Torazon, um, and uh, yeah, various other ones like that. So. Cool. But uh, yeah, I think that kind of uh, goes on a bit of a tour of Ixalan. Um, it's one of those things is I didn't want to drive into too much depth with certain points of things, because I could go over, like, I honestly could, like, go inception-wise deep into a lot of things about locations here and people and things and all that kind of stuff because it is a very complex history of an entire plane. And I gotta kind of cut it short somewhere. It doesn't mean I couldn't revisit things like going into depth about the Sun Empire and their history, you know, where they came from and stuff like that. Uh, the Sun Empire and stuff, or the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Legion of Dusk, all those kind of things. There are times and places where you can go more into depth about these things. But I kind of wanted to give you an idea about the overall history of the plane and a little bit about its surface world. Like, th there's a thing is, we know the culture of Corazon is a very different one than the culture of Ixalan. But, and here's an important thing here that we really have to say here. They all come from the same source. Remember that there is a source of vampires on the planet. And it's uh, Aquazots. Responsible for vampirism at Ixalan. Lendra, as much as she's a good person, learned the dark rituals that turned her into a vampire from Aquazots. With leftover. It's only a week away between these continents. That's really not that far. The history of those regions is just how did it develop so differently? How did the worlds become so different worlds? Was it just the terrain? Because it's farther south and it's less tropical? You know, there's so many questions about the differences between the two continents that we don't know because we do focus mainly on Ixalan, the continent that is the sort that basically the center of the plane. 
you have to think that the major cultures there, the Sun Kingdom, is a direct descendant of the humans that came before there in the core. Were the people of Torzin from an old age? Were they an offshoot there that developed a culture of their own because of the territory there? There are so many questions, and the other humanoid species that are there. The orcs. Goblins. We don't know a lot about their history. We don't know a lot about these things. We know the connections between the two. That there are connections. There are connections deep in their cultures and the way of lives. And the core connects them all. It is just that. The core of a hollow planet. A hollow world. And yeah, it's going to connect everything. There are still so many questions about the history that we do have a lot of answers about. But we might never know them. The game, the lore that's built around the game and the stories might not explore any of this. Granted, that might be up to you for what you want to do with this knowledge. If you just want it as extra knowledge to go around with you playing the game and just know about these cool places that are going on there, cool. If you want to do some things like what they've done occasionally and use it as a setting for something like a role-playing game like D&D, which a lot of times they do have books that kind of connect in between the two of them. Also, some magic sets that are connected to D&D. These exist. And so certainly speaking, you could have adventures here and explore some of this history. Or not. There is a lot of story and existence that happens around here that's very interesting. And the plane itself is one filled with deep, rich history and, honestly speaking, conflict. Conflict has driven it home from the conflict of the early ages against a dark god that basically inserted itself into a pantheon of these deep gods. Or if it would be invaders from another plane attempting to conquer them. Much different than some of the other invasions, it's not like something like a, um, you know, the Phyrexian invasions. Or even something like the Eldrazi War. They were just conquerors. But it goes to show that wars, conflict, are a deep part of Ixion. And can peace be settled? Hard to say. The amount of battle in their blood is heavy. And granted, most of these battles have been against oppressive forces. And there are still threats out there, as I said, too. We have the dark bat gods still out there. Power has been removed a lot of it, but it's still there and probably powerful. Now with groups from the Legion of Dusk having fled, probably to kind of refill some power basis on Horizon. Again, to split the Legion a little bit more. And of course, then you have the Myconoi, which are out there now and on the surface. And they're just basically seeing, you know, all the other humanoids as food. Or just not caring. Kind of hard to say where they really see things for beings like that, but nonetheless. The, uh... Microtype is out. So... What will this being mean for it? Hard to say. They are a possible leftover from an invasion. Or are they something natural? It's, no one knows. Ixalan may still change. We still might get more sets for it. It might be a couple years. Who knows how long before we revisit it. But I do feel the, get the feeling that there are more stories to tell here more interesting stories, and we might see them. I, I, I definitely think we could see them. So will I do more stuff on this in the future? A revisit? Who knows? I, I've, I haven't done a revisit in a lot of old topics as of yet. Doesn't mean I won't. Um, you know. But who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I think that'll be it for today. I gave all the shout outs in the beginning. Remember, you know, give the support there. Uh, the question still stands. What do you think of all this? What do you think of Ixalan? How do you enjoy the sets? 
do you think this would be a great world to use in other fantasy stuff? You know, other stories. Um, I do have social medias, Discord, Twitter. Remember to check out those, twitter.com. Uh, cat picks, other information. Schedule. Want to see tabletop stuff? Uh, either role playing or sometimes like this one, magic related. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Tuesdays, Thursdays, usually between one or two, depending on life schedules. Saturdays, usually close to 11 as we can. There's on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. EST, Crimson Queen. It's a live play Pathfinder First Edition. Join that. Really fun. Great. And of course, discussing tabletop every Saturday at 6 p.m. That's our tabletop discussion show where me and friends talk about news of the week and deeper discussion topics from ranging from stuff in magic, role playing, to tabletop in general. All right, I'm going to get going. I hope all of you out there have a great rest of your day and really enjoyed this deep dive. And if you want to see more magic related stuff, let me know. Let me know if there's any kind of interesting topics, more planes you want to explore, characters, things like that. Just let me know and maybe we'll explore them. But until the next time we talk, learn, see things, and visit the many planes in the multiverse, I bid all of you out there a deep moment. Farewell.